Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about our work on 10 simple exercises designed to get beginners familiar with Python programming. That's right. By the way, this is after a special request from one of my subscribers. So you might be wondering how I chose these 10 exercises. Well, I didn't choose them, but it is part of a TAFE New South Wales um, introduction to programming course and under work week two there's a lab exercise there so these exercises are directly come from the lab two of the course in programming and for this video i'm going to use google collab i can have chunks of my code separated and that way i don't have to run the whole thing uh, at the same time but i can run each of them exercise whenever i choose to and this is a, a good way to get familiarized with uh, google collab as well so like I said earlier, there are 10 exercises and I'm going to go through them one at a time. In the first one, the problem here is we have to write a program that displays the personal information about the user, including name, address, telephone number, and the measure of the user. So I'm going to expand this and show you the code. I'm going to begin by setting personal information as a user's dictionary and store all the name, uh, address, phone number, and college major within that dictionary item and I have here different print statements and each print statement um, uh, is going to print out the name, the address, the phone number and the measure of that user based on what is stored in this personal info. So when we run this we're going to see a nice output and this indentation you see here is based on the slash g um, as you can see, I have done title on some of those output, especially the name, uh, and here uppercase for the major, um, which in, in case of MBA suits very well. Okay, the second one is a sales prediction. Here, a company has determined that its annual profit is typically 25% of the total sales. Now we need to write a program that asks the user to enter the projected amount of total sales and then calculate the profit for that amount. The hint is provided that we need to use 23%, which is 0.23 to represent percent amount of uh, profit. So when we expand this, here's the code. Total sale, we will ask the user to enter the projected amount of total sales. Then we will calculate annual profit, which is 23%. That basically is 0 0.23 times the total sale. And then we print out the total profit. Now you notice that this print statement is slightly different than the print statement we had here. This is f string. And as you can see, we use curly braces to include variables within the print statement in line. In this case, we are saying annual profit for the project is total sale that the user input here is the value that we calculated here. So when we run this, it's going to ask for total sales. I'm going to test with a thousand value. And I know that 23% of that is 230, so it currently gives me the output. For number three, we are supposed to change pounds to kilograms. Well, one pound is equal to 0 0.454 kilograms, and our program should ask the user to enter the mass of an object in pounds and then calculate the, and display the mass of the object in kilograms. So it's fairly straightforward. First, we ask the user for input. We will store that as a floating number and then we use this calculation multiply by 0 0.454 to store that in a kg under the print statement again we have app string here and we are simply displaying what we calculated here so when we run this i'm going to just start with one and i know when i enter that as input i should get 0 0.454 kilograms as an answer which is what i get let's run it again i do 100 i get 45.4 kilograms the next one is the total purchase. In this case, we ask the user for the price of items, like up to five items, display the total of the sales of that five items, and then show the sales tax and the total. Sales tax is assumed to be 7%. So the code will be something like this. So first we start with subtotal of zero inside a for loop. Now this is a for loop using a range function. So what this basically does is it will spit out range of zero, one, two, three, and four. Range 5 means basically stop before hitting 5. So we will start with 0 and end at 4. And for each of these i values, we are asking the user for input, storing that as floating point number, and then adding that back into the subtotal of starting with 0. 
So for each iteration, we will store the floating point number that the user enters, which is added into subtotal. And you might notice i plus one here. So you might be wondering why is that? Uh, and that goes basically back to what I started with uh, regarding explanation of range. Range starts with zero and ends before five. So we will ask for the price of first item first, so which is zero plus one, and then it goes all the way to uh, fifth item. And at the end of all that, we're simply doing three print statements here. We're showing the swap total of all the sales, which is the value here after five iterations. And then we are uh, also showing the tax, which is the subtotal times 0 0.07, which is 7% as required by the question. Also, after tax, we will add both of those values. Now, instead of addition, I'm doing subtotal times 1.07. Let's run and see this. We are purchasing five items. So the first item, let's say, is 10. Second item is 20. Third item costs $30. Fourth and fifth cost 20 each. Now we will show a total of $100 and seven dollars uh, is a tax because of seven percent over that hundred dollars and after tax the total sum will be hundred and seven dollars let's go to the fifth one in this case we have to calculate distance traveled so we know distance can be found based on product of speed and time of travel so if the tra if the car is traveling at 70 miles per hour we need our program to display distance the car will travel in six hours 10 hours and 15 hours so here's the code for that Notice that there is no input re required based on the question. So all we are going to display is how much the car will travel in six hours, 10 hours, and 15 hours, directly calculating the value in line within the F string to spit out the results. When we run this, it will just give us in six hours, the car will travel 420 miles, 10 hours, it will travel 700 miles, and 15 hours, it will travel 1050 miles. In number six, we are programming a payment installment system. So we need to write a program that asks the user to enter the amount of, uh, of purchase and the desired number of payments installments they want to make. The program should add 5% to the amount to get the total price amount and then divide by the desired number of installments and display the outcome to the user. So here's the code for that. Like in other cases, we first ask the user for input, store that as floating value. Here the input would be the amount of purchase made by the user. The second input we asked for the user is uh, the desired number of payments they want to make. And we are going to store that as an integer value just for fun, nothing special here. We are also adding this 5% to the amount to get to the total purchase amount. Now in an if statement, we are checking if the installment is greater than zero. And I will explain you why that is desirable to do so. Uh, installment cost will then be total purchase amount divided by desired installments. And then we're going to print out the total amount of purchases, the calculated amount here, and the each installment based on the calculation here. Otherwise, we will say invalid input on number of payments installment. Now, this check is required because the, um, the user may enter zero installment here. And in programming, we have to pay special care when dividing. So if the desired installment here was entered as zero by the user, then we are basically dividing by zero, which will result in an error. So we had to do this if statement to take care of that. When we run this, it will ask for the purchase amount, let's say 4,200 for this, and then desired number of payments, let's say 10. Now total amount of purchase after adding 5% is 4410, and divided by 10, we get 441 as answer. Now let's run it again and see what happens when we enter zero or a less number. Basically, this is checking if the desired installment is more than zero. So if we enter zero here, then it should give us this output, which it does. I hope you get the idea of why we are doing this. Next question is miles per gallon. Question basically is write a program that asks the user for a number of miles driven and the gallons of gas used. It should calculate the car's MPG and the display the result. Question gives this information just as redundancy. We are not going to use that information in our program here because we, the information are entered by the user as required by the question. When we run this, the program asks the user to enter a number of miles driven. For this, we are going to enter 4200. Then the program asks gallons of gas used. Let's just say we enter 10, it will give us 420 as our miles per gallon mileage. Fairly straightforward as well. Number eight, in this example, we're gonna do similar example as previous one, but we also add tips, tax, and then find the total. So enter the charge for the food, the user enters and it stores as a floating point number. 
then we calculate tips tax and add them and find the total and then print out the result let's run it let's say hundred dollar for the food we eat and then the tips is 18 percent based on the requirement here and then the sales tax is seven percent which gives us seven dollars the total will be 18 plus 7 plus 100, which is 125. For the ninth example, we are calculating area and circumference of a circle given a radius. So in this code, we're importing math. Why? Because math has a, a built-in pi value that we can access using math.pi. First, we are asking user for the value of the radius. Let's say the user enters 10. Then based on these two formulas, program calculates area and circumference and then prints out those results. Let's go to the last question. Here we have a cookie recipe with three items and these ingredients will produce 48 cookies. So we have to write a program that asks the user how many cookies he or she wants to make and then display amount of ingredients required to make that many cookies. So the first requirement is we ask the user for a number of cookies to make. We store that as a floating point number. We could do as integer and then we calculate the ingredients needed based on that. So for sugar needed, if the n number of cookies are required, we would do n times 1.5, which is the number here, divided by 48, which is the number here. And we do that similar calculation for all the ingredients and, and then print out the results. Let's say the user wants 480 cookies. Now it says he needs 15 cups of sugar, 10 cups of butter, and 27.5 cups of flour. And I think that's the end of the video. If you have any questions related to this video or any particular section within this video, please don't uh, hesitate to shoot out a comment or ask a question. If you want me to post another video similar to this or any other topic, then also you can add that topic in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share. See you next time.